I made history today. I'm the first Italian who made it in the top nine of MasterChef USA. Best day of my life so far. Walking into the MasterChef kitchen, I notice a huge box at the front. Automatically, I'm thinking, like, it's some type of alligator, some type of big snake. At this point, I'm getting extremely nervous. Welcome back, everyone. There are just nine of you left. One of you will be America's next MasterChef. We'll see who has the edge right now in your next Mystery Box Challenge. This one, you're gonna love. It's time to find out what's under your boxes. On the count of three, please lift your mystery boxes. One. Two. Three, lift. Oh. <laughs> yeah. A delicious sausage machine. Excited? Yeah. Yes, yeah, chef. A meat grinder. Hell yeah. This is gonna be badass. Who doesn't like sausages? I'll tell you who. Bad people. You will use it to make your own incredible sausage with all of this. So the judges lift up the giant box that they have in front of them, and it is a long line of meat. And then I see that there's full vegetarian proteins there, and I'm excited now. So I just see all these different meats, and I just light up, because one thing that Eddie loves, Eddie loves meat, you know, I'm the meat man. Besides this meat, you'll have use of a limited pantry full of herbs, spices, produce, and other items you can use to make your spectacular sausage dishes. You have 60 minutes to make your own homemade sausage and then feature it in one incredible entree. Your 60 minutes starts now. Good luck. Like a pack of wild dogs. This is a meat festival, baby. I mean, there's everything you could imagine, from alligator to wild boar, ground, chunk, tons of different bacons. But I'm going straight to the king of sausage. Definitely pork today. So, sausages. Gordon, what would you do? I'd go for delicious pork and sage sausage with a Granny Smith apple grated finely through there, and then serve that like a traditional bang as a mash. I'd actually go very similar. I'd probably do a little more veal mixed with that pork for fat, some roasted apple, caramelized onion, spicy mustard with it, just keeping it very simple, kind of Midwestern style. Oh, yeah. Right, Natasha. Hi, Chef. How are you doing? Good. So what's the dish? I'm going to kind of do a play on breakfast. Two eggs, going to have like a hash with it, and then do a chicken, apple, and bacon right. sausage. So it's not forgiven. I mean, chicken, very lean, hardly any fat. It's going to go absolutely Hard. solid and yep. firm. So how are you balancing that up? What are you putting in there? I'm going to be adding a little bit of cheese as well, and there's some mozzarella cheese with it. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. OK, good luck. Thank you. doing a traditional sausage, one you would buy at a baseball game with hickory bacon and wild boar. Hands down, this is something that would be on the menu of a bed and breakfast if I, if I end up having one one day. I'm doing kind of my take on a Midwestern bratwurst with some homemade kraut, some beer cheese soup. The main component is uh, well on its way. This is my roots. This is who I am. Free. Hello. So what's in the veggie sausage? It's actually seitan. I wound up not using the, the tempeh, so. I think it's a really courageous thing. I mean, you know, you're not going the easy route. You're not going the meat option. And, um, you know, you're making something out of the box, so. Yeah, I'm thinking that this is, this is going to be a good one. I'm really excited. I'm just hoping that I have enough time for all my flavors to come together, so. Good luck, Bree. Thank good you. Luck. Eddie, how are you doing? Good, sure. What are you doing? I got a pork sausage going with a uh, braised cabbage, apple chutney. Here, I'm just gently poaching it just a little bit. Wow. Okay, great. And then after that, you take it out, you fry it, and then I'm going to just pan sear it. Just sure. to get it a little crispy. That tastes delicious. Thank you. Poach it, don't boil it. Yep. Crispy. Yeah. 
Percy, that's a nice sausage. What do you got in there? Thanks. I have pork, fat back, salt, sugar, a little hot pepper seeds, some rosemary. You make sausage at home? Um, yeah, this is my go-to Italian sausage recipe. This is another challenge tailor-made for you. Oh, my that dear. smile. I love when you cook happy. <laughs> Enough of the angry thing. I love it. <laughs> I like being angry. Ah. The explosion. Interesting, wow. huh? Yeah, very interesting. A lot of different things going on out um, there. It smells incredible. It does. It does. Spices uh, and aromas. Poaching liquor. The tostas look beautiful from here. For a chicken, chicken sausage, sausage, yeah. Mm. Very difficult. Ed is, is looking incredible. Right now, for me, that man is born to grill. Honestly, he has that natural connect with protein. Chrissy's in the zone. She's going to do some very, very traditional Philly Italian flavors. Mm -hmm. Every time we give her a home-style mm -hmm. challenge, she rises to the right, top. Absolutely. She's never won a mystery box yet, though. Just coming up now, two minutes to go. Sausages should be relaxing, garnish should be ready. You should be plating your dish. Let's go, guys, come on. Think about your presentation. The sausage has to be the hero. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and stop. Hands up. Let's go, guys. Come on. The sausage has to be the hero. Five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands it up. Yeah. Let's go. After observing and tasting throughout the challenge, the judges now take one final look to identify three standout dishes. The winner of this challenge will receive a major advantage in the next round. Incredible. Nine different exciting ways of cooking sausage. Incredible. There were three outstanding deliveries in terms of the sausage being the hero. The first dish that we want to dissect, this individual smartly combined different proteins in their sausage. Great seasoning. The blend was absolutely spot on. Congratulations. Please step forward. Natasha. Natasha, what is this? Basically, I did a spin-off on breakfast. I did a chicken, bacon, apple, and mozzarella sausage. Why breakfast? I think just the simplicity and a beautiful breakfast and a sausage is a, is a way to go, and I didn't think anyone else would think of it. What else is in that sausage? So there's red chili flakes, a little bit of sriracha for some heat, oregano, rosemary. How do you stop that chicken from going dry? I just kind of watched the temperature as I was cooking it. I added the cheese in there, too, to add a little bit of moisture as well, and I did it over the pan and finished it just a couple minutes in the oven. That's delicious. I mean, absolutely delicious. Uh, it's a posh breakfast. Really good job. Thank you. Seasoned beautifully. Thank you. The level of spice is really great. Good texture, great flavor. Good Thank job. Thank you. For people out there who think this might have been too simple, you're wrong, because it's a very smart play. The chicken's really well seasoned. You incorporated a lot of complex flavors. The onions are delicious, and this sausage, it's a winner. Smart. Good job. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty good. So the second dish that we'd like to examine further was put together by a home cook that definitely knows their way around meats and proteins. Their dish was plated beautifully, and this person is step by step becoming a real contender for the title of Master Chef. Please step forward. Eddie. Eddie's climbing up the ladder, and the judges are recognizing him day after day. My pistol's pointed at Eddie now, so when the time comes, I'll pull the trigger and we'll get rid of him. What's going on, brother? Describe to me what we have here. Pork sausage link with braised purple cabbage and apple chutney. I use pork shoulder, bacon, brown sugar, smoked paprika, onion powder, a little Worcestershire sauce.
You've got the, the meaty flavor from that pork shoulder, some spices, the sweetness from the brown sugar, earthiness from the cabbage, and then that apple that just makes it all come together. This is a stellar dish. Great job. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You are starting to seriously shine because it's seasoned beautifully. It's garnished lovely, and that, for me, is the kind of dish that I could see in my gastro pub. It is that delicious. Thank, Thank you me. very much. Thank well you. Well done. Thanks. Wow. The third and final dish we want to taste is from a home cook that put together something really ambitious as far as an evolved dish is concerned. They took traditional comfort food and elevated it to really be a restaurant dish, something I could put on my menu right away. This person has never won a mystery box. Please step forward, Chrissy. I think that Chrissy is a good home cook, but because she has such a negative attitude, I don't think that Chrissy is ready at all to be a master chef. What's this dish? This is Italian sausage and peppers with some Parmesan and polenta. Polenta is delicious. The broth is an excellent idea. Very, very good. Peppers, you. classic, simple, but elevated. And I think that with this kind of plating, you're formidable. Thank you. First of all, it's nice to see you put food on a plate with finesse. And when you put food on a plate like that, it now confirms in my mind that you're taking this competition more serious than everybody standing behind you. It's delicious. Polenta, sauce, broth, uh, peppers, sausage, but it's spicy. The only thing you want to do is continue eating it. Uh, that's your best performance so far this competition. It tastes amazing. Thank you. Good job. Um, there were three stunning dishes tonight. The winner of this Mystery Box Challenge comes with a huge advantage that right now is pivotal at this stage. Only one of you can be the winner. You know, it seems like everybody's dish was spot on. So at this point, I really, you know, can't tell which way they're gonna go. The person who will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming Elimination Challenge. I'm confident that my dish is gonna be a winner. Hopefully, I'm gonna win this Mystery Box for the second time. The person who cooked the best sausage dish. I would love to win a mystery box. I gotta knock some people out, and uh, this is gonna be the way to do it. <sighs> Congratulations. So, there were three stunning dishes tonight. Only one of you can be the winner the person who will receive a huge advantage in the upcoming Elimination Challenge, the person who cooked the best sausage dish. Congratulations. It's this person's second mystery box win. That dish belongs to Eddie. Phenomenal. Really good. Uh, phenomenal. Are you ready to receive this huge advantage? Without a doubt. Let's go. Great job. Well done. Uh, amazing. Congratulations. Thanks. Well done. Good job. Welcome. The winner of the mystery box is now in control of the elimination test, where at least one person will leave the competition. Under these three cloths are some of our favorite ingredients that we use in our restaurants all the time. Okay, Eddie, the first ingredient is a meat enjoyed by people all over the world. Ham. Oh, yeah. Here we have beautiful Iberico ham, Serrano ham, and a spiral of cut ham. The second ingredient is wild and wonderful. It is the delicious fungus. Mushrooms. That's right. The most amazing, incredible, wild mushrooms. You have black trumpet mushrooms, maitake mushrooms, and beautiful Oregon hedgehog mushrooms. The third and final ingredient for your consideration, Eddie, is something unique. It is the most amazing oh. shrimp. Santa Barbara spot prawns. 
We also have tiger prawn, and then one of the most popular anywhere in the world, delicious rock shrimp. For your first advantage, you do not have to cook in this challenge, so you are safe from elimination. So, for your next advantage, you get to choose which one of these incredible three ingredients your fellow competitors will have to cook tonight. What ingredient are you going to choose? Without a doubt, I'm going to choose the mushrooms. Wow. Smart. Great. Wow. Traditionally, mushrooms are put on a plate for a topping or sometimes folded into a sauce. Rarely do you see mushroom as being the star of the dish. So that's what's going to help me get rid of some people today. Now, not all of your fellow competitors will have the opportunity to cook with these amazing, delicious wild mushrooms. You are going to force half of those home cooks out there to cook instead with these canned mushrooms. Cheaper than the fresh, nowhere near as glamorous, and much more difficult to elevate into a restaurant-quality dish. So they're sort of processed, uh, spongy. <laughs> yeah, not nice. These, compared to these, seriously, the difference is night and day. This, right now, is a huge, huge game-changing advantage. Their fate rests in your hands. I'm an ex-NFL player, so I came here to compete and I came here to win. I have my target on Jesse, James, and Jordan. I've taken their weaknesses and their strengths and placed the products accordingly, so I think that my strategy is gonna pan out perfectly. Eddie will not be cooking tonight, but he did play a pivotal role in deciding what you all have to cook. And at least one of you will be leaving this competition tonight. Okay, back in the pantry, Eddie chose the star ingredient that you will all be cooking with tonight. The most amazing mushrooms. But it's not going to be that simple. Eddie selected that four of you out of the eight cooking tonight will be using these amazing, exquisite, delicious selection of wild mushrooms. And the other half of you will have to cook with these! That's right, mushrooms out of a can. Strategically, I gotta imagine Eddie would give me canned mushrooms because I know for a fact he sees me as competition. Each and every pick, he used a lot of strategy. Eddie having an advantage worries me because he knows I'm one of the best cooks in the competition and canned mushrooms are disgusting. No one wants to work with that. Everybody ready? Ready. Yes, yeah, chef. Your 60 minutes starts now. Quick. Go and find out what surprise Eddie has left for you. Really? Yes. Really? Oh! Fresh. Oysters? Oysters? Yeah, these are oysters. These are right? oysters, so I'll need oysters. The fact that Eddie gave me these beautiful, fresh mushrooms is an advantage for me today. I'm going to dance the dance and make a little romance with these mushrooms. So, Eddie, thank you. Wow. Jordan and James, you know, they feel safe because I gave them fresh mushrooms. But please, I want you to feel safe. I'm banking on both of them, just doing too much and forgetting the key factor, which is the mushrooms has to be the star of the dish. These are beautiful-ass mushrooms, so it's kind of hard to f them up. Not excited about the canned mushroom. I can't stand them, but oh, well. Jesse, she's used to working on expensive yachts. Probably never even seen canned mushrooms. Definitely want to try and trip Jesse up. I think mushrooms are a very, very good pick from Eddie. It's the one where you really have to cook and you have bring to that cook, flavor exactly. out of them. Yeah, but he's going straight for his biggest competition. Mm -hmm. Who do you think Eddie really wants out of here? I think he's having a mind competition with Jordan. By giving Jordan the fresh mushrooms, these very delicate, unforgiving fresh mushrooms, would be like dealing him a card that he could overplay it. Trip you know, Jordan's up. the kind of guy who could trip himself up and fall flat on his face. So I'm gonna basically do a mushroom cream sauce and I'm gonna do a mushroom ravioli. I have never cooked with canned mushrooms until now. But you know what, like this is a competition, you're gonna be throwing whatever's given to you, so I'm okay, I'm happy with it.
Kathy, how are we doing? Good. What's going on with this? I am doing? making Sichuan. Sichuan? Sichuan with fresh wild mushrooms, homemade noodles. And I really want my the mushrooms to start. For the sauce, what are you using? I had Sichuan, lemongrass, ginger, pepper, garlic, and onion. Are you going to balance it with anything? You have so uh, like I, a little maple? Or... I, in the pantry, I forgot any form of sugar. Really? I forgot to grab sugar from the pantry, and without that element, there is a definite flavor that's missing. That's my one ingredient that I'm, it's killing me that I don't have. I really desperately need sugar right now, and I'm hoping that someone will just loan me just even a little. Does anybody have sugar? No, sorry. I would give it to you. Do you have sugar? James, do you have any sugar? Sugar? I yeah. don't. I'm going to go ask people. Do you have sugar? I would give it to you if I had it, babe. I'm freaking out here. If nobody gives me sugar, I'm probably going home. Do you have sugar? No sugar. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you have sugar? Do you have sugar? In the pantry, I forgot any form of sugar. Really? James, do you have any sugar? Sugar? I don't. Does anybody have sugar? I really desperately need sugar right now, and I'm hoping that someone will just loan me just even a little. What? Do you have sugar? No. That's my one ingredient that I'm, it's killing me that I don't have. Jesse, do you have sugar? I would give it to you if I had it, babe. You know, Bethy wasn't the one that I was initially gunning for today, but at the same time, she's someone that I see that has a chance of winning. So if this is the end for her, then so be it. Do you have sugar? No sugar. Do you have sugar? Sugar? Yeah. Yeah, right there. Can I use some? Yeah, you can take a pinch. Don't take it all. Thank you so much. I owe you big time, buddy. Bethy wanted some sugar for me, so I obliged. I'm not too threatened by her. That's not my competition. I want you to be at your game. If I want to beat you, I want to beat you with all your stuff. James, how are we doing? I'm doing very well, chef. You have the most amazing wild mushrooms. What are you doing with them? I'm going more of a chowder style with it to keep it thick and hearty. Mm -hmm. And then I'm slow cooking some in a brown butter with a couple of herbs and some onions. I do that as a topping, and I made a little three herb oil to kind of bring some lightness to it. The first thing that went through your mind when he gave you those mushrooms? No, Eddie's a competitor. He's going after some specific people that he's ready for them to be gone. I know what he's doing, so I'm not concerned about it. Who's going home tonight? Uh, probably Luca. Luca. And I think the point he's at now, he's just scraping the bottom of the barrel for something good. Keep yourself in the competition. Good luck. Everybody thinks that Luca is going home tonight. I got canned mushroom, and I'm going to make a mushroom soup. I don't see anything else you can do with it. I need to give as much flavors as possible with some nice colors, some croutons. I think I'm in a good shape, but you know what the judges think is more important than what I think. All right, Bree. Hi, Chef. Ah, you lucky girl. I know. So what are you going to make? I am going to do an onion puree, grilled wild mushrooms. I'm roasting the beets right now with some walnut oil and goat cheese salad. Wow. Onion puree? Yeah. A little bit all over the place today, Brie. Once it comes together, then you'll see it like it is in my head. All right, good luck. Thanks, Chef. Right, Jordan, you've got the fresh mushrooms. What are you making? I'm doing a wild mushroom trumpet ravioli with uh, some deep-fried hedgehog mushrooms mm -hmm. and mushroom beet cream sauce. Is there such a thing? Uh, there is right now, and I wanted to bring another component with the beets. And the mushroom is definitely going to be the hero. Definitely going to be the Not going to be drowned out by the beets. Nope. A nice big portion of uh, ravioli for you guys. Good luck. All righty, thank you, chef. 55 minutes gone. Just under five minutes to go, guys. Wow, interesting. Jessie's yeah. doing the risotto. Oh, really? She has the canned mushrooms, right? So she sauteed them with pancetta to give them bacon flavor. Very right. smart. And then she's going to use them in the risotto. We'll have to see how that plays out. Bethy, on the other hand, is somewhat fragmented. She's doing Szechuan noodles. When you have mushrooms of that quality, would you really need to make a Szechuan? No, a I fusion and a, I mean, it's chilies spice. and spices. Spices going to, I mean, you're going to kill the mushroom. Right. I think we're starting to see Bethy crack at the edges. Natasha doing a ravioli using yeah. these canned mushrooms, making a little Alfredo with mushroom in there. I think that's going to be yeah. really good. Ninety seconds to go. You've got to start plating, please. The mushrooms have got to be the star of this dish. Forty-five seconds to go for one of you. Your last forty-five seconds in this competition. Ten, nine. 
Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands in the air. Good job. Eddie, the man with a competition in his hands, please make your way down. That was a very, very tough elimination. We agreed that Eddie made some very smart decisions in positioning canned and wild mushrooms for who you want to put under pressure. OK, first up, Bethy, please. Tell me first off what you were given. I was given no fresh wild mushrooms. And what did you prepare? Um, so I did a Sichuan noodle dish with ginger and garlic, toasted Sichuan peppers, and mushrooms. And I love mushrooms with um, Asian flavors. Okay. So um, I didn't think that would be a common theme tonight, so mm -hmm. I wanted to go that route. On a 1 to 10, what do you give this dish? Uh, I'm thinking an 8. An 8. All right. Seems like there's a lot of noodle for the amount of mushroom. The first thing that hits me is this overwhelming flavor of sesame and ginger. OK. So anything else after that uh, I'm missing, because that's all I get. OK. When I heard that you were doing something Asian, I was a little bit surprised, first of all, because I just don't think it's the right kind of mushroom. These mushrooms are definitely scream something Eurocentric, you know, either French or Italian or you know, something much more refined. Sesame oil is all I can taste. It's a shame. You don't even know the mushrooms are there. The flavor is completely gone. It's too bad. You've got the delicious wild fresh mushrooms. When did you smell it? I was back there smelling it, like, and that's... too much sesame oil. You've got nothing to enhance those mushrooms, because everything tastes the same, because you've just sprayed my tongue with this perfume of sesame seed oil. Bad day. Yeah, uh, someone's going home, uh -huh. and it looks like you've got one foot out the door. You've done an injustice to those mushrooms. Day. Yeah, uh, someone's going home. And it looks like you got one foot out the door. Not good. I am feeling frantic. I'm feeling nervous. I'm feeling like I don't feel like I'm ready to go home yet. I just hope more than anything that someone's dish is worse than mine. Natasha, let's go, please. So what were you given again? I was given the canned mushrooms. What is the dish? I've got a mushroom stuffed ravioli with the crispy pancetta and white mushroom cream puree. Inside, we've got some tarragon mushrooms and a little bit of aged Greer. I think that the tarragon is a super decoy from the mushrooms. It really covers up that very um, canny yeah. flavor that the mushrooms have. It's a good dish. Good job. Pasta's nice. Cooked beautifully. It's hard to believe there's canned mushroom within the center. So um, I like the sort of three different ways that you've tried to enhance the flavor from a can. Puree, the sauce, and slightly pickled. It's like a $1 can elevated into like a $10 dish. So good job. Thank you. James, let's go, please. When I think of James, I think of a sauce guy. And I think it's going to be hard for James to make the mushroom with the star of his dish, because that's not his M.O. So what is this? It is a wild mushroom chowder. The wild mushrooms were slow cooked in butter, a little bit of creme fraiche with some fresh arugula in it. It's seasoned well, but it is just way too heavy, too rich. And this dish is not what we expect from you at this level. I think that it's way too salty. It's over extracted. What's unfolding here is incredible because Eddie, by giving you the most luxurious, exotic ingredients, he played to your inability to edit yourself. Amazing.
Next up, Jesse. Right, what is that? It's pancetta and canned mushroom risotto. Some julienne leeks and a little arugula oil. You've hidden those horrible flavors that come with processed canned food. The pancetta works. I like the arugula oil. There's no doubt about it. The dish tastes of a mushroom risotto. Good job. Thank you so much. Susie, smart. All right, please, Luca. Hi, Luca. So tell me what we have. Cream of mushroom soup with canned mushrooms. Served with cauliflowers, croutons, carrots, and parsnip. This is the cream of mushroom. So just looking at it, it doesn't look like a soup, you know? Um, visually, okay. it looks a little thick to me. Is that truffle in there? Yeah. At the end, when the croutons were, were nice and crispy, mm -hmm. I just sprinkled some black truffle oil. So to me, the soup itself is pretty good. It's pretty tasty. The only thing I would omit would be that truffle oil. I okay? understand. Chrissy. What is the dish? It's my take on a mushroom cassoulet with crispy pancetta on the top. There's a layer of eggplant and cannellini beans. The pancetta was a good idea. Even a little bit will cover up that flavor right away because it's so strong. I mean, considering what the product you had to work with, this is a pretty impressive effort. All right, the vegetarian that was given fresh mushrooms. Let's go, Brie. What do we have? This is a walk through the forest. Nice. It is grilled sage wild mushrooms with a beet and goat cheese salad. Wow, beautiful. Thank you. A walk through the forest. Come on, dude. Just stop with this whole save the world, friendly, vegan, hippie thing you got going on, because it's really pissing me off. Just cook and shut up. Everything on it's really great. The beet and goat cheese alone would be a great salad with the pepitos here. The peas, delicious. Better than anything is the actual mushroom, which we asked to be the star. This is one of the best things that we've seen you do. Good Thank job. Thank you so much. Thank you. How did you cook the mushrooms? I sauteed them first with sage, and then I grilled them with uh, walnut oil. Everything is cooked perfectly. Everything speaks of itself. For me, this is a dish that maybe if I went to, like, Brooklyn or, you know, some sort of <laughs> hipster neighborhood and I went to a little vegetarian restaurant, I would definitely expect to get a dish like this. This dish is fabulous. I'm impressed. Thank you. Uh, right, next up, Jordan. What is that, Jordan? Mushroom ravioli with a mushroom beet cream sauce and fried mushrooms stuffed with goat cheese and honey. You are a talented individual, and you completely overshot that one. Here's the problem. If I copied your dish and cooked it with a can, you will not identify the difference in the mushrooms. That's the problem I've got with this. And we're not with 20, 50, 70, 100 cooks anymore. We're down to the final nine. Damn. What were you given? Fresh mushrooms. Looks like canned. You've kind of hidden the beauty of all those mushrooms. Yeah. We'll probably schedule a pasta making meeting with Natasha okay. at your earliest convenience as well. All right. Eddie, what was your strategy giving Jordan the fresh mushrooms? Fresh mushrooms, you don't have to do too much to it. I thought Jordan would overthink it and try to do too much. Well, guess what? You're absolutely right. While you thought maybe he was giving you a bone or giving you a real treat or something that you could shine on, he played to your weaknesses. Eddie has taken the two front runners and brought them to their knees. I mean, it's kind of amazing. Eddie has taken two front runners and brought them to their knees. I mean, it's kind of amazing. I think Eddie definitely is targeting me to go home. He struck gold today on his little mind game he threw at me. Well played, Eddie. This has been a very difficult challenge. Uh, right now, we've got a very tough decision to make. We need a minute, please. Thank you. 
can't believe that the fresh mushrooms tended to trip people up more than the canned. Oh, totally. Why'd you give me the canned mushrooms? I honestly thought that you would do well either way. Yeah. I was really trying to get Jordan or James. James was way too rich. It was like a sauce. You know, like I got trashed. Bethy, with a technical error, could see herself going home tonight. Yeah. And that sesame seed, I've still got that taste there now. I knew it was coming. As much as I had a ton of mushrooms on there, you couldn't taste them. All of you, that was a very tough challenge tonight. There were two standout dishes. The first dish elevated that canned mushroom in a way that we didn't expect, but showed great technical flair. That dish belongs to... Natasha. Ugh. Good job. The winning dish tonight, this individual really made the mushrooms the hero. The dish of the night belongs to... Brie. Congratulations. It was a vegetarian dish, and it beat out all the carnivores, and I'm really, really proud of myself. Brie and Natasha. You're both safe from elimination and team captains in the next challenge. Now to the three worst dishes. And at least one of these three home cooks will be leaving this competition. The first of the worst took fresh mushrooms and absolutely obliterated them in a way that was almost an embarrassment. Please step forward, Jordan. The second disastrous dish was muddled, confused, overdone. Please step forward. James. The third and final lackluster dish, step forward, Bethy. Miraculously, Eddie has managed to pull this one off because he's put three of the strongest cooks on their ass. James, step forward. James, you presented us with a bowl of sauce, not a wild mushroom soup that you described. Graham said it tasted good, but it wasn't the hero. It wasn't showing off what we gave you. James, you are not going home tonight. Unfortunately for you, Bethy and Jordan's dish were somewhat weaker. Back to your station. That was horrifying, but I lived to fight another day. And I think that Jordan might be going home today. He's my buddy, but better him than me. Jordan, are you done? Definitely not. I just need to show some more restraint and uh, stay a little more focused. Bethy, have you peaked? No, I had a bad day today, for sure. And, you know, I, I want to make you guys proud. We know how talented you both are, and you've wowed all three of us. But sadly, one of your dreams is ending tonight. The person going home is... Bethy. I'm sorry. That dish was not what we expected at this stage of the competition. Jordan, please make your way back to your station. Uh, young lady, this is not easy for any of us. You're a talented girl, let me tell you. Thank you. I think more than showing us in America that you can cook, you've showed us the work ethic and an ability to perform on a consistent level. If I had to hire one person in this room to work in a restaurant, it would be you. Thank you. Come up here and say goodbye. OK. Say goodbye. You know what I'm going to ask you now. Yes. So, who's going to win MasterChef? My girl, Jessie. Good night, darling. <laughs> Good night. I've learned so much here. There is no way that you can leave this competition not a better cook. There's something quite inspiring about the amount of effort 
that you put into it. Great job. Thank you. My passion for cooking has only gotten greater, so I can't wait to continue this journey. And I feel like my dream now does not seem that big. It seems like in reach, like I can actually do this. Hello, you guys. Next week on MasterChef.